Jeff, Arizona Hot Topics. Let's talk about the Democrat Party. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. My name is Jeff Ferris on the Hot Topic. So, the Democrat Party scares the living daylights out of me. Do they scare you? Here's why they scare me. And this is in no particular order. But when Hillary was running her campaign, her slogan was resist and fight. She even chose that before Trump was the, the winner of the... Republicans. She chose resist and fight. And it made me wonder why would you choose that? Resist and fight. Resist implies hate or dislike. Right? You got someone who's making a pass at you and you dislike them or you hate them. You're going to resist them, right? Resist. Implies hate. Fight. Well, fight means you're going to a fight that implies violence why would you have a slogan of resist and fight that to me sounds very does it sounds like like you want to divide the country like you want to say it's us against them no this is America it should be all of us together with just different points of views right so that kind of worried me and then what also worried me about the whole campaigning thing was she said some things how at Trump rallies or Trump events his his supporters were, were violent. And I was like, really? I've seen a couple on YouTube and they didn't seem very violent to me. Come to find out, later on, somebody recorded two Democrat members, two people that were part of the whole DNC, that were hiring, looking to hire people to go to these Trump events to create violence, to make it look like it was his people were violent. Now, how'd she know that? She was behind it. Russia collusion. She was the first one to talk about Russia collusion. Really? And then after three plus years of investigation, come to find out there was no Russia collusion. And the fact ended up becoming what they did find was that some documentation was fraudulently filed by the Democrat Party to create that investigation. If you were to falsely... If you were to fraudulently file documentation with the federal government, you'd be in jail. But they're above the law. So here they talk about Russia collusion with Trump, and yet they're the ones who actually falsely created everything. And yet they're saying that Trump is above the law, when really they're the ones who are breaking the law. They committed fraud and a bunch of other stuff, and yet none of them went to jail, so they're above the law. You know, the Democrats remind me of that, of two kids in the kitchen, and the jelly jar breaks, right? They're making it a lunch or whatever. Parent goes running in, go, who did this? And they got jelly all over their face, you know, it's kind of a cute scene, too. The one that's guilty points his finger at his little brother, or his older brother, whoever, the innocent one. He did it. That's the Democrat Party. They're guilty of everything, and they keep pointing the finger over there saying, it's he did it. Who's the one who's dividing the country? They say Trump is. Um, no, actually, it sounds more like the Democrats based, uh, uh, excuse me, based on the, their words and their actions. Sanctuary communities. Why would you support sanctuary communities? Do you realize that sanctuary communities opens the door for a terrorist organization to send people over as illegal immigrants and hang out in these sanctuary communities without the fear of being deported? That scares me to death. 
We could have sleeper cells like crazy right now. We don't even know it because they're sleeping. Why would you want that? Their support for illegal immigrants over Americans just, it boggles my mind. Why would you do that? And then you have, most recently, you've got all these violence, these, quote, protests. Obviously, I don't know the definition of protest, but I thought there was America allowed peaceful demonstrations, peaceful protests. I didn't realize burning down a, a city and creating vandalism and, and theft by tearing down a statue and, and removing it, that's actually theft. By graffiti, that's actually vandalism. Graffiti is against the law, it's vandalism. Arson, um, you know, they were hurting people, they were beating them up, they were killing them. And yet, all this, they, they were damaging police cars and things. Really? Setting them on fire and things like that. I'm like, really? How is this a peaceful protest? How is this people exercising their freedom of speech? Really? The right to protest? Is that? That's kind of weird. And then they allow it to happen. They're like, what was the Seattle mayor said? It's a summer of love. Really? <laughs> and then this defunding police... So let me get this straight. The more crime that's committed, and since the criminals are calling for less police, the government says, oh, gee, you're right. We'll do less police. Really? That's when you increase the police force, you idiots. Make them a deal. No crime for a whole year? We'll defund the police. They can't do that. Because their behavior is criminal. So defunding the police doesn't even make common sense. I don't understand that, that whole mentality. I don't understand why you would allow all this violence and then not ask for help. Not call in the National Guard or call in the extra police force or call in or whatever. Just allowing it to happen. Do you really hate America that much to where you're willing to allow people to destroy it? Now, we can see here and argue the Confederate statues for, you know, until we're blue in the face, but the bottom line is it's personal property. Somebody owns it. Either, either a group of people own it because they formed an entity, or maybe an individual owns it, or it's owned by the people via the government. Somehow it's owned by somebody or some entity. By graffiti or breaking it, that's vandalism. By removing it, that's theft. Those are crimes. I don't care what the statue is. The statue could be of, of Babe Ruth. It could be Hitler. It could be the devil. It could be Jesus. It could be everything in between. It doesn't matter. It's personal property. You damaged it. That's violence. That's 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 property damage. That's against the law. Duh. That's a criminal act. How do you support that? Democrats do. And then and then you got the Democrats who who what they through the house they impeach Trump on what? Hearsay? On perception? I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Based on that, you can impeach every single president ever. Because their whole deal was, hey, do you think that, talking to experts, do you think that Trump said that so that he could influence the uh, 2020 election of a opponent, and yet Biden wasn't even chosen then, of a potential opponent or whatever they said. And some people said, oh yeah, sure. I'm like, really? He 
was looking into some. Well, then basically what they did to Trump earlier with that whole Russian collusion was also wrong. Trump was looking to see a Biden colluded with Croatia. That's okay, but Trump colluding with Russia was not. I don't understand their mentality. So impeaching them was just wrong. And and Pelosi. Oh my God! First off, have you guys? Listen to her talk lately. I, I, all jokes aside, try to be dead serious. I think, I think there's something wrong with her. I really do. She has trouble forming a sentence. She's worse than Biden. I was watching an, I was watching an interview. I don't watch her much, but I was watching an interview after Trump did some executive orders, um, to help out. You know, the American people with this whole COVID thing. And I couldn't understand what she was saying. It was just like, she was like, woo, out there. <laughs> so, I think something may be wrong. But, that's for another video, I guess. So, but anyhow, she's had such a hate for Trump. She has yet to say anything nice about Trump. And yet, the media didn't even cover this. Trump, when AOC, Alexandria, or Queso, Cortez, or whatever her name is, AOC. It's actually a cool name, even though I can't pronounce it. So, she, uh, she actually called Pelosi racist. And here Trump was standing there, kind of like on his way to his chopper. All these reporters are asking him questions. He came to Pelosi's defense. He's the only person who ever did. The Democrat Party didn't even come to her defense. Everyone just, shh, don't say anything about it, it'll go away. AOC called Pelosi racist. And Trump said, she is not racist. And he protected her. He defended her. Now, he went on to attack AOC and, and her gang, and I kind of agree with that because their policies and their thoughts are way out there. They're totally anti-American. They don't care about America at all. And so it was, it was just one of those things where I would say everyone covered, because I think they, because I think Trump said in that, in that talk that some about they need to go back home. And that was considered racism. Well, what he was referring to was, if you can't fix your own hometown, why are you here in Washington trying to fix everything else? Start small. Fix that first. Prove that you can fix something. They, they can't fix anything. Prove that your ideas work first. That's what I got out of it. But everyone else got, ooh, he's racist. And that's another thing. Trump racist. You know, I can't, I can't find it. Every time they say he's racist, I'm like, building a border security wall. Racist. Really? Not too sure how that's racism, but okay. You're weird. Saying go back home is racist. Really? Actually, when you're at the bar and they're closing down the bar, they tell you to go home. <laughs> you know, police actually tell you to go home, too, quite often. I don't know if you're ever confronted by police, but if you're at some deal, they, they're telling you to go home or whatever. I don't know, I've never been there. I'm just making that part up. But still, I guess the part is, I can't get how that's racist. <laughs> so, and yet, think about this. The Democrat Party, oh, and supporting the Confederate monuments and statues is racism. I, I don't get that either, because many Confederates, well, I'll give you a great example. Example, Andrew Jackson, he owned a slave. 
but do you also realize that he fought many, many years to pass legislation to ban slavery? So even though he owned it, owned a slave, he fought to end slavery. And if you actually do your homework, you will learn that there were literally dozens, if not hundreds, of these folks who were Confederates, who owned slaves, were fighting to free them. And if you actually also look at how they were treated, many of them were treated really, really well. In fact, John Adams. When John Adams got married, his father gave him a slave as a wedding gift. Seems really weird, right? But also back in the day, slaves were a sign of wealth. The more slaves you had, the wealthy you were. It's just like it's just like some countries. When you, when two people get married, sometimes the father would give somebody a, a, a cow for a wedding gift. You know? Things like that is was normal back then. You know? Nowadays you might give someone a house or something. I don't know if you're wealthy. But it's a sign of wealth back then was slavery. But they treated them really, really well. No one ever talks about how the slaves were treated. Now granted, some were probably treated pretty poorly, but some were treated probably pretty well. But for what was it I read? Oh, almost 20 years, many politicians were trying to end slavery. And the Klan, the Ku Klux Klan, I'll probably get banned for saying that, but the Klan actually created the Democrat Party. That was their way to have a say in our government, was to create that party. Now you might say, Oh, they've, they've evolved. They're not racist anymore because Harris is on their team. They've got, they got diversity. They, they support blacks. They support minorities. Really? Then why is it that communities that are run by Democrats seem to be lower income communities? For 30, 40, 50 years, they're still low income. Why? Obviously, they're not doing anything for the people, are they? It's because it's modern day slavery, folks. When you keep those people oppressed, and you create as many government programs as possible, that makes the people dependent on the government. What is a slave? A slave is dependent on his owner. For what? Food? Shelter, work, etc. Healthcare. Modern day slavery is the poor is dependent on the government for what? Food stamps, government housing, government involved healthcare. Do you see the relationship? It's modern day slavery, folks. And I can't believe people don't see that. They want something from the government and you don't realize that's not freedom. Freedom is not being dependent on the government. Freedom is being dependent on yourself. That's truly how this country was founded. With people depending on themselves to come out west and strike your rich or, or, or to create a family and have land and, and be able to be self-sufficient with a farm. The Democrat Party scares the living daylights out of me. If you hate Trump, once you've learned about the Democrat Party, you're going to hate the Democrat Party. And I and I tell you what, I don't care what Biden and Harris stands for. I don't care what they they say. Just the pure fact of the way the Democrats have been acting and what they've said over the last few years. I cannot support any Democrat. And I am a registered Democrat. But I will be I will vote for anybody but a Democrat. Let me tell you, if I'm looking at that ballot and there is a serial killer on there, I'm voting for the serial killer over a Democrat any day right now. 
Later on, I may vote Democrat. But right now, the Democrats hate America. And their policies and their words scare the living daylights out of me. I can't support that. Thanks for listening, guys. My name is Jeff Arizona Hot Topics. See you. Bye. Have fun.